Hello, this is Joseph Zoltan. Today's subject is abortion. Now, many people are dug in on a certain position who will say, there is no controversy. I've looked into the situation. I'm right, and all everybody else has to do is agree with me, and then the problem will be solved, which is not the way a democracy works. If we consider a continuum, a straight line, at one end of the straight line, we have people who will say abortions should not happen, period, for any reason. At the other end, we have people who will say abortions should happen anytime a woman wants to have an abortion, and that's that. In between, we have a whole lot of variables. Variables include up to how many weeks can an abortion be permitted. And some people will say up to so many weeks. Some people will say no, up to this many weeks over here. So there are differences in the weeks that people feel an abortion should be permitted, if they feel it should be permitted at all. So that was one track is the timeline. Another track is the reason for the abortion. And some people will say it should only be permitted to save the life of the mother. Others will say it should be permitted in cases of rape. Other people say, well, it should be permitted in cases of incest. Other people will say, well, it should be permitted in cases of all three. But we have another avenue, which is the legal avenue. That is the question of should abortions be legal or not. And we still have the two different tracks of the timeline and the reasons for the abortion. Let's for a moment consider speed limits. Speed limit on the highway is 65 miles an hour. In a particular congested area where there have been a number of accidents, the speed limit has been lowered to 55 miles an hour. Some people will say, well, in that little stretch of highway, we can't go over 55 miles an hour anymore. It's against the law. But has the statement been true? The second part is, but can you still go above 55 miles an hour? If your car could go above 55 miles an hour before, even if the law is passed, it can still go above 55 miles an hour. So you can go 65 you are running a risk. First of all, a risk of safety because the speed limit was lowered for a reason. Second is you could get a citation and you could have points against your license and you could have a fine, but you could still go above 55 miles an hour in that stretch tomorrow morning if you wanted to, still taking the risk on safety and law enforcement. We can conclude that when a law is passed against something, it doesn't mean that something cannot happen. It means if it does happen, it is illegal, and here are the potential consequences. You might get away for a long time without getting a citation and without having an accident, but it does not mean the potential consequences aren't there. So given that, if abortions are illegal, anywhere along those tracks we discussed, does that mean that no one can possibly perform an abortion because it's against the law? No. People can still perform an abortion. I call your attention to the 18th Amendment, prohibition of alcohol for beverage purposes in the United States. Does that mean that the day that that amendment was ratified and proclaimed by the Secretary of State, that immediately all alcohol consumption for beverage purposes in the United States came to a screeching halt until it was repealed by the 21st Amendment later on? No. There were plenty of violations. We had bootleggers. We had speakeasies. My grandfather made beer at home. Some people made gin at home. If you've ever heard the expression bathtub gin, very popular in those years. I'm not sure how good it was, but it was popular. So people did not find a way around the law. They found a way to violate the law, and in many cases got caught, and in many cases did not get caught. So abortion, under whatever tracks we want to use, if we make it illegal, there will be a medical doctor somewhere who will do the abortion for $2,000 cash in the back room after hours. And then a veterinarian will do it for $1,000 cash in the back room after hours. And we will have some people, like before, doing abortions in a dirty garage with kitchen tools, nothing sterilized, and they read a pamphlet on how to do abortions, and they think they understand most of it. We used to call them the butcher shops, and they resulted in a lot of dead women. So if you're going to make abortions illegal, you are not going to prevent abortions. What you will end up doing is probably causing more deaths among the women who are trying to have an abortion. And then we have, of course, women who tried to do it themselves, the coat hanger and lots of other things that shouldn't have happened. But it could be a big tragedy in terms of the number of deaths. So some of the pro-life people who are very adamant about making abortion illegal but don't seem to be doing anything about actually stopping an abortion, might want to change their name from pro-life to pro-death because that could be the end result of what they do. So we come now to the question of law enforcement. 
The idea of making abortions illegal is supposed to be to stop abortions. The people who say they want abortion illegal say it's going to stop abortions. They say they're against abortions, and that's why it should be illegal. The organizations that I've examined that want to make abortion illegal do not seem to be doing anything to try to stop abortions. And by that I mean, for example, all the birthing centers. We have one here in town. And it does stop abortions because it provides free prenatal care, free birthing, free postnatal care, and has plugged into the various adoption agencies to be able to put the baby up for adoption if desired. The stereotype of the person they're trying to help is the 14-year-old girl who comes home and says, parents, I'm pregnant, and gets kicked out of the house. Finds a place with an uncle, finds a place with a girlfriend. They take the girl in. The solution to the pregnancy seems to be an abortion, in part because the girl will not come under the medical insurance of the uncle's or girlfriend's family because she is not a member of that family. So she is not a dependent. We may have to go through a foster care procedure. We may have to go through formal adoption. But that means that the initial family has to legally give up the child. It's all very complicated. In the meantime, the weeks and the months are going by. And the idea of carrying a pregnancy to term without insurance coverage is an expensive proposition. And abortion is cheaper. Birthing centers provide the services free, financed by donations, and can prevent abortions by providing an alternative that eliminates the financial problem. And there are other situations, too, where they provide great service to people in need. So stopping abortions is one thing, and making them illegal is something else. So if we have abortions illegal, and we say we're going to do some prosecutions, generally speaking, legislators do not seem to be after prosecuting the woman. They seem to be interested in prosecuting everybody else. So let's say we have an abortion, and we have the abortion provider, the assistant, the father who paid for the abortion, and the boyfriend who encouraged it. All of those people can be prosecuted. But you need evidence to prosecute somebody. Evidence a crime was committed, and they committed it. They all participated in the crime. So you have to produce the evidence of the abortion, which means in order to enforce this law, you have to have a successful abortion. Otherwise, you can't prosecute for somebody having performed an abortion. Now, I want to reiterate, in most cases, nobody is interested in prosecuting the woman. So let's go into the subject of attempted abortion. We have people who might attempt a burglary, a bank robbery, um, some other crime, attempted shoplifting in a department store, and they attempted to do it and they got caught before they completely carried out the crime. But you have to have enough evidence that it was a serious attempt. We add in attempted abortion as a crime. That doesn't stop an abortion but it makes it a crime to attempt one. So we have laws against burglary, we have laws against shoplifting, and we have laws against attempted burglary and attempted shoplifting. So sometimes these are hard to prove. Someone goes into a department store, picks up a shirt, examines it, puts it back on the shelf, was just looking. Somebody else comes along, picks up the shirt, and slips into a shopping bag. As soon as it goes in the shopping bag, we can charge the person with shoplifting, not attempted shoplifting, saying that the crime has been committed, not just attempted. In some jurisdictions, the person would have to walk out of the store with the unpaid for shirt in the shopping bag and it's outside of the store's property before it's really considered shoplifting. But there's a narrow window where we can charge somebody with attempted shoplifting between somebody who's just looking and somebody who converts the article to their own possession. Very narrow window. But they're still on the books. And we do have people convicted at times of attempting a crime, in many cases serious crimes. So it's possible to prosecute somebody for an attempted abortion, but how possible? So here's a scenario for you. We're going to the doctor's office after dark or someplace else that quietly serves as an abortion clinic. And there is the table and the various equipment, and they are prepared to do the abortion. Now, the police would like to stop the abortion from happening, because that's supposed to be the purpose of the law, but make the arrest for an attempted abortion. Well, without going into detail, once an abortion begins, once the procedure begins, the fetus dies relatively quickly. And then there's more to it. I'll call it the cleanup and just leave it at that. So 
there's a very, very short window of time where you can say we can make an arrest for an attempted abortion, but the abortion has not yet happened. Very short window. So if you do make the arrest there, who do you arrest? Generally speaking, you would go after the abortion provider, the assistant, the father, and the boyfriend, and not the woman. The woman can be a witness in the trial of these four individuals and say, yes, those are the terrible people who are ready to do what I asked them to do, what I wanted to have done, and they should all be prosecuted. But before the woman can serve as a witness, we have some time before the trial will take place, months. A year, maybe longer. So what does she do during that period of time? Well, the very day that the attempted abortion was stopped, after finishing discussing the matter with the police and giving her name and address and all as a witness, and the four perpetrators are taken away in handcuffs, she goes down the street to somebody else and has the abortion anyway. The only way you could prevent that would be saying, we have not charged this woman with a crime, but we're going to take her into custody anyway for the next several months until she delivers the baby. And then she can have the baby, we can put it up for adoption, or whatever might happen at that time, but we're going to keep her in custody because she attempted to have an abortion. But it's not a crime, the way most of these laws are written, to be the woman who is attempting to have an abortion performed. So now you are holding somebody in custody without a trial, without a charge, with no evidence of her committing any crime, and that goes against the constitutional guarantee of due process of law. So that isn't going to work very well. So I'm making the case that the laws against abortion are not going to prevent abortions. Too difficult. And nobody seems to want to enforce the law. At the time of this publication, we have many doctors who are refusing to even treat miscarriages. They're afraid that they'll be caught up in the net with the new laws. So there probably will be some showcase trials. And none of these providers want to be in them, and none of them want to lose their license. They work too hard to get those licenses, and that's their career. That's what they know how to do, not something else. So people who are practicing medicine are reluctant for right now to be in those showcase trials. But what about the long term? Are these laws really going to be enforced? It's going to be very difficult to catch the people who are performing the abortions because nobody is going to have a sign up out front that says abortions performed here. But is any enforcement planned? Who will make the arrest in these cases? Police? Police have plenty to do, but we do have some specialized police units. For example, the Homicide Squad, the Missing Persons Bureau, uh, the Burglary Detail. So will we establish offices within the police department of patrol officers and perhaps detectives who will determine which doctors are performing abortions after hours, which dirty garages are being used for abortion clinics and stake them out and wait for a woman to show up and on suspicion of her wanting to have an abortion with no probable cause, smash down the door without a warrant or go over to a judge, swear out a warrant, get the judge to sign it and come back with a search and arrest warrant. Problem is, by then the abortion is going to be completed. So the enforcement is very difficult, and nobody is talking about setting up police units to try to do anything about illegal abortions. So we seem to have almost a facade here of legislation against abortion that doesn't seem to have any intent of being enforced. So I hope today's video was informative and useful for you. It's a complex issue, and many people in our country do not realize just how complex, as I said at the beginning, but it is. And it will be very difficult to enforce these laws on any sort of a wholesale level. So if you enjoyed today's video, found it interesting and informative, please like and subscribe. Click the notifications bell so you're alerted immediately of new videos as they're published. And check out the books I have available in the link down below in the description. Thank you for joining me today.